<sighs> we missed with the last round, but that's kind of how a battle zero looks. You want to be able to hold on the plate and then make impacts at unknown distances with relative ease on fairly generous targets. So we had a one-third IPSC over here on my left at about 70 yards. I think that's actually a 45%. We had a 10-inch circle out there probably at about 150. We had a two-thirds IPSC out there at about probably 220. And then we had a full-size IPSC out there right at 300, or just a little bit over 300. So now, Let's move into what a battle zero is, and I'll give you a look at the different options for 300 blackout. We're back again with another battle zero video. This is actually the third one that I've launched. I started with 556 five, NATO, then I moved into 762 or 308, and now we're going to shoot supersonic 300 blackout. Now, these videos are really fun because I'm going to shoot cardboard in this example from 50 to 250 yards with three different zeros. And then at the end of the video, what we'll be able to do is measure groups, but then also take exact measurements of how each zero performs for point of impact versus my point of aim at different distances. We're also going to push out on a full-size IPSC at 300 yards to get an idea of how easily can I connect with a full-size torso out to 300 yards with this 9-inch upper shooting supersonic ammo. So before we start shooting, let's talk about the Battle Zero theory. It's actually relatively simple. So if you're not familiar with it, think about your optic. This is your line of sight, and your line of sight is always straight. So this is basically straight to infinity. And what we're gonna do in this video is shoot, for example, a 20, 250 yard zero. So in that example, we're going to actually adjust the point of impact of our bullet up to meet our line of sight at 20 yards. So you think about this scope, it's sitting about two and a half inches high over the bore. So we have to use our elevation turret to bring that impact up and meet our line of sight at 20 yards. And then beyond 20 yards, because of the arc of the bullet, our bullet is gonna rise above our point of aim, start to fall back down, and in this example, meet again at 250 yards. And then beyond 250, it's gonna to start to fall off again, and that is where we have to ask ourselves, how much error can we accept in our zero? So we're gonna shoot three zeros in this video. We're gonna shoot the 20, 250, the 25, 200, and the 35, 150. Now I came up with those by using my Shooter Ballistic app and just running some numbers and taking a look at theoretically where that bullet should be at each of my different yardages. So in theory, the 20 to 50 is gonna have quite a bit of error in the intermediate distances, but it's gonna allow me to push out to 300 yards on a torso with relative ease. Move into the 25, 200, There'll be a little bit less error in my point of impact versus my point of aim, but I'm gonna have to hold a little bit higher to connect out there at 300 yards on a torso. The 35, 150, very little error between say zero and 200 yards, but because of that extra drop out there at 300, it makes it a little bit more difficult to connect on that full size IPSC at 300 yards. So from here, you gotta ask yourself, how far out are you trying to push a 300 blackout like this? As I mentioned, in my mind, I'd like to be able to connect with a center hold out to about 300 yards. So that's what I'm gonna to use to choose my zero. Now from here, what are we gonna do? We'll move into a quick gear review. I'll give you a look at what we're shooting here for a rifle, optic, and ammo package. And then we're gonna start shooting. We're gonna start with the 20, 250. I'll shoot that at the 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 yard line on cardboard, 300 on steel. I'll swap over then to the 25, 200 and then finally I'll swap over to the 35 150 and at the end of the video we'll review the performance so before I start shooting you got to let me know in the comments what zero are you running which one of these are you expecting to perform the best and have you experimented with other zeros maybe that I'm not testing here that you'd like to see me try down the road so as I move into the gear review let me know in the comments your thoughts I'd love to hear them I'd love to chat with you and I'd love to start, learn something if I can so with that, let's move into a gear review. So here's a quick look at the gear we'll be running in the video. This is the exact setup that you recently saw in my 300 blackout at long range video, where we shot this rifle out to seven, 800 yards with supersonic ammo and it performed very well. If you haven't caught that yet, make sure to check it out, but here are the details. So the lower is my Knight's Armament SR15 SBR lower. It's equipped with a Knight's two-stage trigger, 
decent trigger and it performs quite well. The upper is an old school AAC 9 inch 300 blackout upper. From what I learned, this is actually one of the very early commercially released uppers. So this has got the URX2 rail on it. This thing is circa early 2010 era, right when 300 blackout was launched is when this upper hit civilian hands. So really cool upper. I understand it's a one and seven inch twist barrel. And in my experience, it's gonna shoot this Remington 125 grain open tip match ammo really well. So as far as ammo, again, this is what I shot out to 700 yards with beautiful results. We chronograph this and it's running about 2000 feet per second or just a little bit over 2000 feet per second. So definitely supersonic and great shooting out of this upper. For a suppressor, I'm gonna run my Surefire 762 SOCOM Mini. You've seen it in many videos, it performs very well. And I think it fits this 300 blackout upper quite well. I'm gonna run this just to knock the blast down so I don't have to shoot unsuppressed. For an optics package, we're gonna be running the Riton 5 Tactics 1 to 10. Really like this optic. Again, Riton sent it out to me to use on the channel, feature it in videos, and get an idea of how I like it. Maybe one of these days I'll do a review video because so far I'm a fan of this optic. I really like the reticle, the glass seems clear, the turrets are really easy to use, the clicks are solid. So I have a little bit of footage that you saw there in the intro through the optic to give you an idea of what the reticle is. But in this video, I'm going to be using the center dot or the center aiming point throughout the video. So when I'm shooting these targets, I'm going to be shooting each of the orange dots using the center dot. I'm not going to be doing any holding. And that's what's going to allow us to actually see where our impacts truly are versus our point of aim and then take those measurements. So that's the gear from here. We'll move into the 20, 250 yard zero and start shooting. So first up will be our 20 yard zero at the 50 yard line. I just finished getting my 20 yard zero, which I'll pop on the screen. From what you see there, I actually bumped to the right two tenths, get that centered up. But now let's go ahead and put three rounds at 50 yards and see where we impact. All right, so really probably not the best group, but it looks like it landed right at two mils high. Now we'll push out to 100 yards. All right, we've pushed back to 100 yards with a 20 yard zero. Let's put three rounds down there, see where they land. So again, I'm on the left hand side, second dot up from the bottom. That group actually looks pretty decent. I'm measuring it about also call it 1.8 mils high at 100. So from here we'll push back to 150. 20 yards zero at 150 yards. Left hand row of dots, third up from the bottom. I think I see those about roughly one mil high. A bit of mirage out there, so it's hard to tell, but let's push back to 200. 20 yard zero at the 200 yard line. Left row of dots, fourth one up from the bottom. We're fighting a pretty nasty right to left wind, but I'm gonna continue holding just dead center on the dot. See where they land. Can't see those at all. Next up, we'll push back to 250. So next up is the 20 yard zero at 250 yards. According to my shooter app, this should pretty much be zero. So elevation 
should be pretty close to centered up on my target out there. I just ran down and looked at my impacts from 200 yards. They had pushed just a little bit to the left in the wind. So for these three rounds at 250, I'm going to put my dot at 3 o'clock on the orange dot to push into the wind just a little bit to make sure my impacts stay on cardboard. So my aiming point is 3 o'clock on the orange dot, 250 yards. So I can't see the holes, but judging on the dirt splash, we should be pretty close. Next up, we'll push back the steel at 300. Next up is the 20 yard zero at 300 yards. Full size Ipsic down there with a black dot spray painted kind of upper chest. I'm going to aim again at three o'clock on that black dot. So elevation the same, right edge just a little bit to fight that right to left wind that we're experiencing. So let's see where these three rounds land. Impact. Looks low left. Impact. Impact. So nice little group out there. Right at one mil low. A little bit on the left edge, but very capable of hitting a full size torso with an upper chest hold. So I just swapped over to a 25 yard zero and I moved back up to the 50 yard line. So we'll do just like we did with the 20 yard zero, but we'll put three rounds on each of the dots with the different yardages. So the 50 yard line is the center bottom dot. I'm gonna aim dead on, see where these three rounds connect. Nice little group there. Call it point nine mils high. So push back to 100. 25 yard zero, 100 yard line, three rounds. Center row of dots, second up from the bottom. And my cardboard moved just as I squeezed that shot off. From what I can tell, those are right in the crack. About a mil-ish high. We'll push back to 150. 25 yard zero, 150 yard line, three rounds. Center row of dots, third dot up from the bottom. I can't really see those that well, but keep pushing back to 200 yards. All right, 25 yards zero, 200 yards. According to my shooter app, this should be zeroed basically. So we should have point of impact pretty close to center elevation on that orange dot at 200 yards. We've got that right to left wind still. So these three rounds, I'm going to hold three o'clock on the orange dot to push into the wind just a little bit. All right, can't see those. We'll keep pushing back. 25 yard zero at 250 yards. That's the center row of dots, top dot. Now with this right to left wind, again, I'm gonna favor three o'clock on the orange dot. Wind might have died on that one, but I'm going to run down and take a close-up look at those shots at 250, and then we'll push back to 300 on steel. 
So we've moved back to the 300 yard line with the 25 yard zero. We still have that right to left wind, so I'm gonna start with my first round favoring three to four tenths to the right, which is just off the right edge of the dot. There was quite a bit of drop out there at the 250 yard line, so I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna be on the plate, but this first round, I'm gonna hold elevation in the black dot, right three to four tenths. We'll see where it lands. If it drops low, I'll have to adjust up, but I'll call that out in the video. Also, I loaded up five rounds, just so we got a little bit more to play with here on this zero. So first round, elevation on the dot, just off the right edge of the dot. Impact, very bottom edge of the plate. Impact. So we're right on the bottom edge of the plate. So these are impacting 1.5 mils below my point of aim. So I'm going to come up and hold one mil in the dot. So that's basically putting point of aim at the top of the head. So one mil to the dot or point of aim top of head holding center. Off the left edge, need some wind. So right a half. Impact. Impact. And it looks like those two were just kind of in the belly area. So with a 25 yard zero, at 300 yards, we're dropping 1.5 mils low. Basically, to impact the torso, you have to hold top of head. Now let's swap over to the 35 yard zero. So our last zero to run is the 35, 150 yard zero. Off camera, I went ahead and got her sighted in at 35 yards. If you're trying to achieve the 35 yard zero at the 25 yard line, you want your point of impact to be about 0.6 inches low. Not something I'm gonna show on camera, but a low point of impact at 25 of 0.6 will get you in the ballpark of the 35 yard zero. With that, I've got three rounds loaded up and we'll put them on the bottom right dot from the 50 yard line. All right, a nice little group out there about, call it four tenths high. So a little bit high here at 50, let's push back to 100. 35 yard zero, it's a 100 yard line, three rounds. We're on the right side, second dot up from bottom. I think that's a pretty decent group out there. Let's keep moving back. We've moved back to the 150 yard line with a 35 yard zero. According to my shooter app, a 35 yard zero should also be a 150 yard zero. So in theory, point of impact here should pretty well match point of aim on the orange dot at this 150 yard line. I'm on the right hand set of dots, third up from the bottom. Alrighty, we'll keep on moving back 200 yards. Now we're back at the 200 yard line with a 35 yard zero. In theory, that should have been just about spot on at 150 yards. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you saw. But uh, now we should see our point of impact trending below point of aim. So start looking below that 200 yard dot to see these impacts. So right hand set of dots. Second down from the bottom, or second down from the top, my bad.
man, that dust flew pretty bad to the left, but let's push back to 250, see where we're at. 35 yard zero at the 250 yard line. In theory, our point of impact should be substantially below point of aim here, so look quite a bit below that upper right circle. We still got that pretty strong right to left wind. I'm gonna hold right edge of the orange dot, so three o'clock on the dot. Dust is pushing pretty bad to the left, but next up we'll put five rounds on the full size Ipsic at 300. Move back to the 300 yard line with the 35 yard zero. We still have the full size Ipsic down there and we still have a pretty decent right to left win. So because the 25 yard zero was already hitting quite a bit low at 300, I'm going to start by holding my point of aim at the top edge of the head. And I'm going to favor right a half mil. Now, in theory, my point of aim is still on the plate. It's kind of on that right edge, just inside of the right edge, an inch or two. And then elevation, top of head. So let's see where these land. Impact. Impact. I'm actually going to cut my wind back, only favor a tenth or two. Impact. 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 And that group is stacking right at two mils low. So if I remember right, the 25 yard zero was about a mil and a half low, and these are right at two. Now let's go take a close up look and review the results. So that's going to conclude the shooting portion of the video. You got to let me know down in the comments, did you see anything in the performance that interests you or might have you thinking about making a change to your setup? I'd love to hear it. And while you're doing that, I'm going to chat about what I saw for downrange performance. So what were we doing on the cardboard? Remember from left to right, we shot the 20, 25, and 35 yard zeros. And then from bottom to top, we shot from the 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250 yard lines. And then we shot 300 yards on the full size Ipsic that's behind me. Now, first zero we shot was the 20, 250, zero. I believe this zero is pretty decent for shooting a full size torso, and I'll show you why. So at the 50 yard line, you can see my point of impact pushed high by about three inches. 100 yard line, point of impact pushed high six and a half inches. 150, we're six inches high. At 200, that bullet's starting to come back down just a bit, so we're five and a half inches high. And then at 250, we're zeroed up. So quite a bit of error in my point of impact versus point of aim in these intermediate distances. Something you'd have to account for by holding low if you're shooting a smaller target that's not really generous on height. With the 20 yard zero at the 300 yard line, I was able to hold upper chest on the black dot and get impacts kind of in the belly area for roughly one mil low. So I believe the 2250 is great for a torso out to about 300 yards. Now, if you don't like the error and the point of impact and point of aim here, you might choose something like the 25 200 yard zero, and here's why. So the 25 yard zero at 50 yards, I'm an inch and a half high with my group. At 100 yards, I'm four inches high. At 150, the bullet's starting to come back down, so I'm three inches high. At 200, I'm pretty well zeroed up, which is what we wanted. And then at 250, my group is eight and a half inches low. So with this 25, 200 yard zero, if I hold center chest, I'm very well easily going to make hits on a torso all the way out to 250. Now when we pushed out to 300 yards with this zero, Remember, I started by holding elevation in the black dot, and I was putting impacts at the very bottom edge of the plate. I found if I pushed high and held basically top of head, that allowed me to put impacts kind of in the belly area, or as I measured, 1.5 mils low. So if you're gonna push maybe past 250 with this 25 yard zero, hold top of head, it'll allow you to make hits in the chest. So very versatile zero. 
a lot less error in point of impact versus point of aim in these intermediate distances. If you still don't like the amount of error here, you could try something like the 35150. So with that zero, at my 50 yard line, I'm only about 0.75 inches high. 100 yard line, call it two inches high, two and a quarter inches high. That groups a little bit vertical spread, but I'm gonna call it about two inches high. At the 150 yard line, I'm 0.75 inches, or in my mind, basically zero. So that 35,150, very little error out to 150 yards, or even call it 200, where I'm only three and a half inches low. As I pushed out to 250 yards, you can see my group pushed quite a bit low. I measured the center of this group about 12 inches below my point of aim. So if you're shooting a torso, or maybe you wanna shoot smaller, less generous targets, this 35 yard zero might be a great choice because you're really only ever off your point of aim by two and a quarter inches or three inches out to about 200 yards, depending on where your target is and what size that target is. Now, with this 35 yard zero, I was still able to connect on the full size torso out here at 300. And to do that, I just held top of head again. I was able to stack those five rounds in, kind of lower belly region, or as I measured, about two mils low. So, in summary, each of these zeros are very capable of being a battle zero. The question is how much error can you accept in your point of impact versus point of aim? So I'm not going to tell you one is better than the other. I'm going to leave you with the thought of what are you trying to do with your rifle? How far do you want to shoot? How is your setup compared to mine? And then with that, hit the range and find out which of these zeros might make the most sense for you. So with that, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around and I thank you for the support. Now I'm really trying to grow this channel and I hope you'll help me do that because it's your interaction that's gonna do that with me. So if you like this video, drop a like on it, comment, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you think? Is there anything else you'd like to see out of the 300 blackout rig that I've got here? And then finally, if you wanna see more content like this, make sure and subscribe so that you're on the list when I drop my next video. Finally, check me out on Instagram at Mountain Smollett's America. It's a great place for us to interact. I share what I'm working on and we can have great conversations with the DMs, et cetera. So check me out on Instagram there. And finally, thank you for sticking around. Hope you'll join me in my next video.